Events that contain audio, like the cowbell we recorded, the shaker, and the drum loop, are called audio events. And events that contain musical data, or MIDI, are called instrument parts, like the organ we recorded in the synth bass and the hand claps. Now, we have right-click menus, contextual menus, for editing actions, and they're different for instrument parts and for audio events, but they're grouped very logically. Let's click on an audio event, or right-click, rather, and we can see here that we have some basic settings that we can change as we mouse slide here. And we'll explore these in more detail later in the videos. But we can select the different layers when we've recorded to different layers. And we can even unpack the layers to individual tracks. I'll just do that to show you quickly. Those are the different cowbell layers all on their own track. Now I'm going to hit Command Z to undo. And we can continue with cut, copy, paste. And then we have our recent items, which shows the most recently used items. And then we have editing categorized or organized by the event type. So these are general editing functions that apply to both. And then here we have audio specific editing functions and in a few instrument part commands. Now, when we click on an instrument part or MIDI part, we get, again, the same set of event-based parameters on the top, although they're slightly different. Cut, copy, paste commands, recent items. And then here, again, we get the general commands that are the same for both. And then instrument part specific editing functions and then some more under musical functions here. Now, fundamental to all editing that we do in this arrange view or in the editors is the notion of the grid. Now, we've spoken about that, where the grid is divided up into bars, beats, and then subdivisions. And we can have editing actions like moving or pasting or lengthening or shortening or dragging conform to grid increments. And that's based on snap to grid that we have over here. So we can turn snap to grid on or off with this button. And the shortcut for that is N. That's simple to remember. And then we have a series of values in the snap grid that we can choose from. So adaptive is the default, and it adjusts based on your zoom level. So you can move freely, and it's going to, in this case, you see it's sort of snapping to 16th notes. And that's based on this level. I'm going to hit Command-Z to bring it back. Now, if, for example, I go to bar, I'm going to bring it back. You'll see it sort of snaps whenever we get to the beginning of a bar line, snaps to it. I can release it freely anywhere, but it'll snap to that bar. And you can always hold the shift key down to override the snap. So I have shift right now and it's not snapping and that'll free you from the grid. And again, I'm going to hit command Z to bring that back. And we have further settings here. We can have it conform to the value we have in quantize, which in this case is the same as the adaptive mode at this zoom level. And we can work in frames if we're working in absolute time rather than bars and beats. We can also snap to cursor and loop locations. So when we're working with loop zones like this, this will act as another kind of anchor or magnet that it'll snap towards. And then we can snap to event boundaries, zero crossings. And that deals with when we're working with audio and we're editing, when it's in the middle of a waveform, it'll round it off to where the waveform is right at the zero line so that you're not in the middle and you won't get a nasty click or pop. And this is important. We have snap to grid and relative grid. So when snap to grid is on like this, it's going to snap to the absolute value. For example, let me do this as an example. So let's say this is now starting in the middle of beat three, and I have this set to bar. It's going to snap to the beginning of each bar absolutely. But if I have this in relative grid, it's going to snap to this place in each bar. There, you see it's snapping to that offbeat of three. So it's relative to where you are, in this case, in the bar. It preserves the offset, which is very useful when you're dealing with music and specifically audio recordings that might not conform to specific bar boundaries. You can move them freely with the confidence that they'll maintain their offset in relation to the beat or whatever value you have set here. I'm going to leave that off for the moment, though. And I want to look at some basic zooming. We've been working just in one kind of view here, but we can use the W and E keys to zoom horizontally in and out. And then we can use Shift W and Shift E to zoom vertically and get things wider like that. And we can also just Click right in the timeline here and drag up and down, and that'll zoom horizontally. 
And you can also just use your mouse wheel like that. And if you add shift, it allows you to scroll left and right with your mouse wheel rather than zooming. So mouse wheel to zoom, add shift to scroll. And you got lots of easy navigation. And just because we're up here looking at this loop marker, this is set to snap to bar. So this as well is going to now snap to bar increments. But I want to show you a nice little command. If you option click here, it'll snap the right boundary to wherever it is that you're clicking at. And if you hold down the command key, it'll snap the left boundary. So it's an easy way to quickly set your loop point. I'm just going to hit forward slash to turn it off. And finally, there's a couple of zoom modes here, some preset zoom sizes. We have normal, there's medium, large. So there are just some preset zoom levels that you can jump to like that. And then from here, we have a slider for zooming like that. But I prefer using the key commands W, E, and then Shift W and Shift E are the basics. We'll see you for more in the next video.